Come vape with me. I've just come in from outside and outside there is the most horrendous wind. So I put a scarf on. I have not converted to Islam but I've just come inside from walking the dog with my husband and while I was out I had some thoughts so I thought I might as well just sit here and get them off my chest now. These were the thoughts I had. I don't see a really bright future for us vapors. Already we see a whole lot of crap science coming out about what's in e-cigs and what's in our vapor and God knows what else and I'm pretty tired of it. In fact there hardly seems to be any good news anymore. But there are two things that strike me about vaping where we could get really badly criticized. The first thing is about sub-ohming. I don't like the sound this makes. If I've done this in front of people, all eyes swivel on me to see what I'm doing. So that makes me feel uncomfortable. The other thing that makes me feel uncomfortable is the amount of vapor that comes out when you sub-ohm. And I'm wondering whether that can't be used as a criticism against vapors. For a start, in a room where there's loads of people vaping, it soon actually gets very foggy and you can hardly see the other side of the room when everybody's sub -ohming. The air is filled with vapor. Some daft scientist is going to come out with real science that proves our vapor is absolutely full of horrendous chemicals. How are we going to defend ourselves? They will say we're polluting the air for everybody around us and we'll have the same old second-hand smoking myth resurrected in all its colors against vapors. So it's the amount of vapor, just let me get my other device here, the amount of vapor, the sound of the vaping, which is a sort of loud serpenty hiss, Oh, that's my husband making a hell of a noise in the kitchen, um, putting walking things away. Um, so we'll get criticized for that, I'm sure. When I go out, I don't take my sub ohming box mod because I use, as I've said before, this device, which is an R80, which just cups in my hand. And remember, I've got arthritis, so it fits and it's comfortable in my hand and doesn't one oh, nearly tried to sub arm on that damn it let me try again doesn't make a loud noise and it doesn't emit too much vapor in fact I can cut that vapor right down if I double breathe in so that worries me the in your face act of sub ohming in public it's going to bring eyes looking at us and criticism directed at us and some kind of persecution i'm absolutely sure though i do like it i must say i sub ohm a lot here all by myself at home and my husband is used to the clouds coming out and the noise he doesn't jump nervously anymore that's the first thing. The second thing is how green smoking really is. The tobacco is grown, it's put in paper, you smoke it and it turns to ash and you dump your butt somewhere. We, smokers would not be criticized as being um, dirty and messy and horrible if there were more places for them to put their butts. But nowadays there is no uh, consideration of smokers at all 
and of course the smoking bans because we've been lumped into smoking with smokers the smoking ban affects all vapors as well so the wrong part is actually the smoking ban the smoking ban should be reassessed and some consideration should be given to smokers and vapors in effect and I've heard vapors saying oh I don't want to go out with dirty old smokers for goodness sakes we were smokers such a short time ago that's a dreadful holier than thou arrogant um, disgusting thing to say I don't mind being with smokers with smokers always starts a conversation about vaping and the myth of secondhand smoke is total scientific mumbo jumbo which the bad science will be turned on vaping too if we cannot sort of control the amount of vapor we release well that's what I think so smoking is much greener than vaping to make a device to make the tanks to make the batteries we are using earth resources so the green people will be on our backs about how much we are disrespecting mother earth and digging all these resources some of them are quite rare in um, vaping products and batteries and things so we'll be criticized for raping the earth imagine if vaping became worldwide and used more than smokers ever smoked that's a lot of earth resources we're going to be using so that's a place of criticism and then when we finished with our batteries and our tanks and our atties and all the rest it seems to me it would be sensible to recycle everything so we don't use so much earth resources so in our house we've got a bottle in our pantry and all my um, level 2 devices that's ego batteries and stuff like that which run out I chuck in that bottle and of course I'm severely hard of hearing and deaf so my hearing aid batteries get thrown in that bottle and all that is taken to be recycled but there are some e-cigarette makers or device makers vaping device makers manufacturers that will recycle the bits and pieces that we get when we've got um, more advanced devices so that's what I was thinking when I was out in the wind that crunching sound is my husband sitting down in the chair next to me because he's also just come in from the wind and now he's taking his boost boots off and I thought I'd make this quickly while the thought was in my head so it's the amount of vapor sub in public <laughs> and that crunching sound was my game which tells me that online my wheat fields have collapsed and I must go and build some new wheat fields so this is a rowdy movie the amount of vapor the sound of the vapor, the hissing is scary for ignorant observers and bystanders. And the fact that vaping products, the hardware, uses such a lot of earth resources that in fact smoking is greener than vaping. Smoking is not approved of in any way, but that very fact can be thrown against us vapors in the future and I don't know about you but as a smoker I was sick and tired of being persecuted and I don't want that to happen again so thanks for vaping with me I'll go and take my scarf off now and I'll sit in my chair and happily sub-ohm <laughs>